Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. My name is Dr. Joseph McHale from the Translational Genomics Research Institute. Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, coffee-talk-style, six-episode series on the latest and greatest in multiple myeloma. Please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure your notifications are turned on to be prompted when new episodes are released. Today, we're going to discuss the topic I've given the title to of by specifics, by specifics, by specifics. And why do I say that? Well, by specific therapies are really revolutionizing how we treat multiple myeloma. If you're not familiar with them very quickly, by specifics by their name are by specifics meaning they have two arms like a monoclonal antibody but now with two arms, one arm that reaches out to hook onto the myeloma cell. Traditionally through the BCMA target, although we're developing new ones as I'll mention in a moment, and the other arm typically reaches out to a T cell by engaging the CD3 antigen on the T cell. But again, as I'll mention in a moment, we have new targets on uh, new immune cells like natural killer cells. These therapies, as I've mentioned, <clears throat> are significantly changing the way we treat multiple myeloma. We already have one approved in the form of teclistamab, and we have a whole series of others, over 12 others in development. Now, why are these therapies so significant, and why are they changing what we do in myeloma? Well, a lot of it is to do with this new immune approach of engaging T-cells, but without having to go through the challenges that we have in CAR T-cell therapy, where we collect T-cells, we send them off for manufacturing, we wait for six to eight weeks, uh, then we have to reinfuse them into the patients, often in an in-hospital setting because of the risk of cytokine release syndrome, and then, of course, some of the sequelae thereafter with hematological and infectious risks after CAR T-cell therapy. Now, CAR T-cell therapy is fantastic, and that's going to be another Monday. Monday morning Joe that we'll chat about. But with respect to biospecifics, this simplifies that process and allows us to engage the T-cells in a way that we're literally taking the drug off the shelf to use for the patient. Now, as with every new therapy in myeloma, it's going to go through some growing pains. Uh, right now, as we use teclistamab in clinical practice, patients have to be admitted somewhere between one to two weeks in hospital uh, because of the step-up dosing and because of the risk of cytokine release syndrome. But if I can be Joe Prophet for a moment, I'm going to predict in the future, we're going to find better and better ways to deliver not only to clistamab but other uh, bispecific therapies so that that process will be simplified and easier and potentially even uh, a a able to deliver it fully in the community without having to be admitted to hospital. But that's coming down the line. So as I mentioned, the target on the on the myeloma cell has historically been BCMA, and so we have teclistamab and several others uh, that are that are coming down. There's elranatumab, there's uh, a Regeneron product, there's several others in development that target BCMA. But one of the reasons why I think bispecifics will be so influential is we now have other targets. And although we can go from one BCMA strategy to another, we know it's preferred to be able to change the target. And that may help reduce the risk of resistance and increase efficacy. And so the next target is GPRC5D, which is also very heavily expressed uh, on myeloma cells. And our first GPRC5D targeted therapy is talquetamab. And this drug may be available uh, uh, as soon as the calendar year 2023. And interestingly, it has a bit of a different profile. Not only does it have a different target, that comes with different risks. It seems to have slightly less of an infection risk, which is always a great concern with bispecifics, uh, but it does have different uh, issues with dyskesia or change in taste, uh, some effect on the nails and skin and hair. And so that has to also be optimally managed. There's a third target that we're exploring with bispecific therapies, and that is FCRH5. And Sevostimab is the first drug, if you will, in that group of bispecifics. Uh, and so we're going to hopefully before long have multiple targets on the myeloma cell, but also potentially engage other cells. We've historically been engaging T cells, but now we're doing clinical trials with natural killer cells that have a significantly uh, lower risk of cytokine release syndrome, where we may be able to deliver it even even more uh, cleanly. One key thing that we found in all of these bispecifics is a re remarkable response rates, typically over 60 or 70%, maybe not the same level of CAR-T, 
but remarkable response rates. Patients do need continuous therapy, and there are significant risks of infections that we have to watch for and often treat for the hypogammaglobulinemia and for the cytopenias. But nonetheless, I would say that one of the major themes of myeloma right now are bispecifics, 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 because they're really going to change what we do in clinical practice. Well, thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes of Monday Morning Joe on the Exchange CME YouTube page. And clinicians can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.